All right, good morning, everyone. I will continue to say good morning until 6 p.m. tonight, today. Um, this is a talk about an open source universal router, not only for power line communications, but for uh, also for USB and for, for other devices that uh, can be connected to the network. And let me introduce uh, Florian, who is a student of uh, telecommunications engineering, I think. Yes. And uh, Xavier is uh, the chief, chief technic technical uh, officer of Open Pattern, which is a French company. So um, there's a warm welcome for you. Let's uh, have an applause for the people here. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. Um, so first, it's a great pleasure to be here and uh, be able to speak out uh, in front of this crowd as it was, uh, I was uh, on your side uh, in the previous CCC, so it's a great pleasure to present something. So uh, we have 45 minutes to discuss uh, one tool that we've been developing since a year uh, about what we call PLC, which stands for Powerline Communications. Um, the idea behind Powerline Communications is to use the electrical cables to uh, set up electric uh, logical network and so far there was no real open source tool that can be used to configure or to try to uh, do extensive uh, features like uh, we will see. So uh, why FIFA is a long story, I will make it short. FIFA means uh, electricity in Lao language. Uh, Laos is a small country of 4 million people located between uh, Vietnam and China and Thailand and Cambodia. And uh, basically in Lao languages you uh, don't have very modern terms so when you want to uh, make a technical term you have to add words together. So for electricity you have to add fire and light. So uh, the logo of the tool is uh, basically uh, FIFA written in Lao language. Uh, so the outline of the presentation, uh, first uh, I will do a small uh, one-on-one class of what is Powerline Communications for those who uh, are not familiar with this technology. Um, it's basically located at the physical and Mac layer. Um, we will see a little bit of security issues. And then we will target one specific standard, which is called uh, Homeplug AV, which is the latest uh, Powerline communication standard, industrial standard. Uh, as we speak, Thursday, last Thursday, uh, last week, uh, there is an IEEE group which uh, works on the standardization of this technology. And they have been voting different baseline for the future draft of the standard. And on last Thursday, they've been voting for this uh, home plug AV technology to be the baseline for the next generation of standard for IEEE. So the name of the standard will be IEEE 1901. And because they are using home plug AV for the draft, we are pretty confident that the tool we have been developing for home plug AV will be able to be ported and used for the next IEEE standard coming uh, in 2009. Then uh, we will uh, go more in details about the hardware parts and what, uh, what are the features of the FIFA tool. And a little bit of a demo with uh, some equipment that we brought that you can find out there in the market. So uh, like I said, uh, Powerline Communications is the usage of electrical cables for logical area network. Um, could be on the public electrical network, could be on the private electrical network. Um, basically, you can split applications in two main groups, outdoor and indoor. In the outdoor applications uh, world, the idea is to uh, provide uh, internet access over electrical cables from the core electrical network to the very end user after the meter, electrical meter that you have at home. And you have the 
so-called private electrical uh, network, the, the one that you can find after the meter, after the electrical meter, and that covers the electrical network for uh, a home or a building, hotel, hospital, and so on. Uh, if we make an equivalent between uh, what we have in um, networking, you can imagine the electrical cable environment like a big hub at the layer two. And basically you will have the plug on one side and the ARJ45 on the other side. If you plug that all over the electrical network, you will have basically a big hub where the media is split and shared between all the tools and devices connected on the electrical network. Um, just a little bit of history. Like I started my talk, now IEEE is doing a standardization of this technology. So far, there were no real uh, IEEE standards. So there were a fight, a fight in the markets between different technology. Uh, in light, you have what we call high bit rates uh, technology. This technology are using the 1 to 30 megahertz frequency band, this part. And in light gray, you have uh, some low bit rates. Uh, Paul, I'm, uh, I'm sorry for the quality of the, the, the schematic. And the low bit rate is using the, this band, which is the 3 to uh, 150 kilohertz which holds less space for bandwidth and bit rates. So we will target high bit rates. That's the one used for logical error network. And like I said, uh, the standard coming up is called IEEE 1901. Uh, basically, IEEE is going from uh, 1 to um, 802, and then they continue with different technology. And for Powerline, it's the 1901 group. So the standard will be called 1901. Uh, I'm lacking one schematic, I don't know why. Basically, the idea was to show you the two main applications that I was talking about, outdoor and indoor. Uh, so indoor, basically, you have the green signal going from uh, electrical plug to electrical plug. One question that we uh, have often is, do I have the signal going outside of my house or my electrical network. Um, basically, it depends on the meter, but for most countries, the meter is not blocking the signal. So you will find the PLC signal uh, from your neighbor or from next door going to your electrical uh, network, and there is no real blocking of the frequency that I was talking about. So if I go a little bit more in details about the physical and the MAC layer, um, at the physical layer, they are using OFDM, uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. That's the one technology that we can find in mostly, most net network technology like DSL, uh, Wi-Fi 802.11G, uh, WiMAX, and so on. And there is an adaptive coding depending on the quality of the channel. So they will uh, switch from the best quality of uh, modulation and coding with uh, 1024 QAM, which is quite high, uh, low to uh, PSK for more robust uh, um, transmission. If you do the math at 24, 20, uh, 1024 QAM, you can go up to 200 megabits per second at the physical layer. At the MAC layer, you will find uh, CSMSEA, so you will find uh, a medium which is not able to give you uh, collision detection, so you will have to implement collision avoidance, and the rest will be uh, crazy uh, similar to 802.3 IEEE frames. So uh, basically what is doing OFDM is splitting the binary stream between uh, different sunbands and transmitting the sunbands from one uh, part of the electrical network to the other part. If you have perturbation uh, between these bands, they will not uh, block the whole bands because of the M is very strong to be only uh, perturbated by one uh, subband. More uh, visually, uh, we've been doing 
tried of sniffing uh, PLC communications. So as you can imagine, the cable is uh, behaving like uh, an antenna, especially electrical cable are basically straight going in each room, each part of buildings. So you will have some uh, emissions, radio emissions outside of the cable. If you make a test at one meter with a, a signal analyzer and you try to uh, use uh, 60 kHz per division, you will find in the 1 to 30 megahertz DOF dome modulation. So uh, this is 1, this is 30 megahertz. You will see uh, basically the, the physical layer and uh, you will have the adaptive modulation changing all the time when the channel is changing, basically when some electrical plugs, electrical devices are changing the quality of the channel. So this is, uh, this is what we find at the physical layer using a signal analyzer. Um, now in real, uh, in the market you can find many types of PLC equipment. You will find uh, Ethernet bridges for PLC line, basically that kind of tool where you have like uh, the electrical plug, could be uh, European or Japanese or American, and you can find the uh, Ethernet port. On the same ID, you will find different uh, devices like set-top boxes. For instance, in France, we are very fond of uh, set-top boxes for DSL access. So now the, all the ISP in France are using PLC for local IRA network between devices uh, of the offer they, they have. You will see MCU gateways, some equipment that you can put at the head of the electrical network for a building and from that you can uh, spread the signal over the building. Uh, in the US you will find something called sling boxes where you can take the video cast uh, stream and resend that stream over uh, either a local network or a remote network. Some uh, IP uh, video cameras are using PLC now. Um, a a device called Y Power. Basically, it's a, it's like an electrical charger, except that he has two cables: the electrical cable going to feed the devices and the network cable going to the boxes. Um, and you have some ISP devices uh, also. I think the main change will be that IEEE now, by choosing one technology, will make more confidence into the chip market and the people in the chip market will uh, develop chips that they will embed in some devices. I am pretty confident that in some year we will have, like we have Wi-Fi chips inside laptops, we will have PLC chips inside laptops and you will be able just to plug your laptop and get the feed from the electrical network from power line signal. So, like I said, uh, we are basically uh, stacking the classical, uh, physical uh, and Mac layer. So, uh, you will find the physical data units embedding the uh, Mac layer data units and then uh, transmitting that over the cable. Uh, so, if we look at the security issues in power line communications, the first one compared to Wi-Fi is the difficult access to the medium. Uh, Wi-Fi is radio, so anyone is able to basically sniff the radio either in promiscuous mode or active mode. In the power line communications, if you want to sniff, uh, you need a complete set of tools to have the, from the logic analyzer to the analog to digital converter, demodulator, uh, then you need to dump the data and you need to decrypt that data. So, uh, it's, not, it's not easy like you can find uh, a chip card and just dump the data and do the decrypting offline. Plus, at the physical layer, like I said, every five seconds you have a reconfiguration of the modulation. So, if you are sniffing, if you want to sniff the whole uh, packets, you will have to be able to change the modulation picked by the devices every five seconds to be able to reconstruct the bitstream. <coughs> um, in terms of um, 
in terms of keys used. Uh, before Home Plug AV, there were another technology called Home Plug 1.0, which were able to do uh, 14 megabits at the physical layer. And this technology is using uh, what we call NEC, Network Encryption Key, is the WEP or WPA key for PLC. This is a, a key at layer 2, and they were using 56 DES encryption. Um, the next generation Home Plug AV that we are looking at is using AES-128 encryption and the network architecture is basically in two parts, coordinator and stations. It's not really a master-slave architecture but similar to that where the coordinator is doing, is managing the whole network and uh, will give access and will give uh, credence to every station connecting to the um, network. One other important uh, key issue is that if you don't have the right network function key, you will not be able to get the Ethernet frame on the uh, ARG45 side. Meaning that if the device is not configured with the right key, the only part of the device that can access the frames is the electrical part. So you have a kind of protection from the chip side to prevent frames going on the Ethernet cable. Uh, finally, uh, in the same ID, the major chip vendor now is called Intelon, American-based, and they have uh, two major chip, 5500 and 6000, and this chip is embedding this functionality of the network encryption key that makes the separation between electrical cable and Ethernet cable. Though there is a small hole in the security uh, that they wanted, because they wanted to implement what they called an easy mode, uh, easy connect, they don't, uh, they're not supposing that everybody can implement and configure every devices. So on the devices you have a small button and if you press that button you have a one minute time frame to press the button of the other devices that you want to pair, that you want to be part of the same network. In this one minute time frame, they will uh, use what we call the TK, temporary encryption key, and they will be able to exchange the actual network encryption key using that TK. So uh, you have to be there when they do that one minute time frame. But during that time frame, there is some frames using a temporary encryption key and uh, some very first frame transmitted in clear. Again, you need to be able to sniff the medium to be able to get these frames. So, uh, if we switch on the home plug AV and we make a focus on that, uh, home plug AV, like I said, allows in the 1 to 30 megahertz band 200 megabits at the physical layer. This is in the base case. Everybody, everything is nice. The electrical network is clean, so the channel estimation is at the best. And you can uh, estimate that you will have the most uh, bandwidth. Of course, electrical networks are subject to interferences from uh, different devices that you have plugged and plugged on the electrical network that will change the whole impedance and the whole uh, characteristics of the network. So you will switch probably from 200 megabits to 100 or 50 megabits if you are going to a robust uh, mode. Um, the whole managing configuration uh, aspect of power line communications is done by 802.3 frames. And these frames can be uh, recognized on a network because they are using a specific effort type which is 88E1. So if you see any uh, frames like this with uh, your favorite Wireshark or TCP dump, this is power line communication frames for home plug AV. We can think that uh, IEEE may use the same effort type. Um, if you are implementing a home plug AV, you can have up to 256 devices on a logical power line network, but you can also divide your electrical network into different logical networks. And uh, of course you will share the medium 
but you will be able to make a uh, different logical power line communication network. The architecture, like I said, is uh, one coordinator. There is an automatic election of the coordinator. When you plug your devices, one device will be elected by the other because it's well located on the electrical network, so it can interact with all the devices. And the other one will be in station mode. So you can refer to a kind of master-slave architecture. With FIFA, we wanted to be able to uh, interact with the different devices and being able to monitor in real time the physical layer coding modulation scheme so we can understand what is being used at the physical layer and uh, how from the theoretical uh, 200 megabits in real life uh, which modulation are used. Um, last feature Homeplug AV uh, described the start of the technology where they can use CSMA CA or TDMA. Uh, TDMA is time division multiple access and they are able to use that because on the electrical network they have a natural carrier which is the 50 or 60 hertz. So by using the zero crossing time they are able to do a time synchronization of all the devices so they can be able to do a time division of the, of the time and say this station can, uh, can send or receive and they can have a, a quite good quality of service on that one. In real life, uh, most of the devices are using CSMSA because they have, been used, uh, they, they have seen some feedbacks that uh, TDDMA is using lots of uh, processing on the embedded devices. Again, in real life, uh, ISP, Internet Service Provider, are pushing power line communication now. All the major ISP in France, uh, in Germany also, are proposing what they call uh, either net plug or free plug or live plug, which are power line communications devices to connect the different boxes that they have in home. And, for instance, uh, NEF, one of the major ISP, is proposing um, these boxes to connect the DSL modem to the video decoder or to the third laptop or third computer that you may have or printer that you may have at home. Okay, so thank you, Xavier. I'll um, give you a short uh, focus on what kind of hardware there is inside the uh, PLC bridges or system on chip architecture. So it's basic, there's a basically an analog front end to uh, encode the analog signal and decode it. Then you get a high speed um, analog converter and uh, most of the time there's a, there's a chip which is equivalent to the Ethernet Phi chip which is a INT 1000 series uh, chip for the Intel based devices and which is MII connected to a um, PLC uh, Mac which is uh, implemented either by uh, Intel 5, uh, 55,000, uh, 5500 or um, uh, an Intel 6000 uh, based device. But uh, any other PLC vendor uses, uses the same architecture. Um, inside, the, uh, inside the chip which mm, acts as a Mac, there's a firmware inside which most of the time has been uh, which is uh, harm, uh, harm architecture, so there's harm code inside. And so the, this, uh, the chip is uh, using a, a real-time operating system, which is Nucleus, and so it's doing the, all the Mac operations. And you can query the chip using special Ethernet frames. Some are documented and are standard and some of them are proprietary, so uh, you can encode your, um, your request on uh, two bytes, so you have quite a lot of possibility to, uh, to implement proprietary uh, queries. And on the other side, you get, of course, an, an Ethernet file and possibly an Ethernet switch, depending on the architecture you want to have. So, uh, as Xavier presented you, even at config uh, power line configuration frames appear with a specific error type, which is 8.8.E1. 
So, um, the, uh, FIFA, I'm not sure we've been able to upload it yet because we took the train this morning and it was a bit uh, difficult. Uh, you may notice if you have devices at home that uh, same devices using different firmwares act differently and things that may be standard in fact are not. So. If you can test the tool uh, at home with your devices, it would be great to show, uh, to make a compatibility matrix, for instance. Uh, we've been talking about that already. Um, there are, in fact, some tools to configure devices. This one was uh, done by, uh, I'm not sure it's developer, no. Intelen. So you can see the devices on the home plug AV logical network and eventually the quality. Uh, I'm not sure that computation of the quality was right, but you can see a kind of a network topology of your, uh, of your logical uh, network. There was um, a tool which we used um, originally, which is a tool developed by Manuel Casper, which uh, is named uh, PLConfig but it uses raw sockets, so it's not really portable, and it was only able to configure and query on Plague 1.0 devices. Later, we found a Wireshark Dissector, and finally, there's a package by Divolo, which is half proprietary, half open source, which allows you to only set up network encryption keys on the devices. So you're not able to query all the vendor-specific and standard-specific um, even at uh, frames. So we wanted to make something which is portable, scriptable, and um, of course uh, can query any any device. So uh, there's already a deep uh, package. Uh, you can change the standard input, output, and error streams. So if you want to, to uh, give raw comments to the tool, it's possible. You can configure your devices, of course, using you can set network encryption keys, and you can query any speci link statistics specific uh, frames. Uh, we also discovered in um, that proprietary uh, frames, you can dump the SDRAM and the NVRAM of the chips. So possibly coupling this to uh, the one minute time frame that you have to get the TE key, you can probably get over keys and over mode. And there's also something interesting in um, two senses. First one is the sniff uh, sniffer mode allows you to first see the beacons which are sent by the stations, just like with Wi-Fi. And you can also configure the destination MAC address of where the uh, sniffer should send for even at frames. So suppose you send this to a broadcast address, since it's sen sending something like uh, 100 frames per second, it's kind of interesting. Uh, we'll make a presentation right now. Okay. So we're starting the tool. Uh, I'll query the device, which is uh, get the software. I'm not sure you're seeing things. <laughs> is it better? Okay. So first of all, we'll make a get device software request to uh, to discover the chips. More, a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. <laughs> So, is it okay? At the back, they want very large <laughs> font. Okay, one more. <laughs> okay, perfect. Big font are good. So, as you could see, we detected a device which is uh, an Intel 6.3K uh, uh, and running this firmware version and which is not upgradable. Some, device has, some devices are upgradable, this one is not. So uh, I don't know what I can show you. Well, well, 
Um, let's start with a sniffer mode, it's funny. So you can enable, do not change the state or disable it, so we'll enable it. And it's going pretty fast. So I gotta disable this. Uh, <laughs> no, too fast. Okay. Anyway, uh, if we add one uh, Wireshark, you'll see that there's a lot of Ethernet frames being sent by this sniffer mode, and you can get a lot of physical information. Uh, since we could not pair our devices, we won't be able to show you the link statistics information, but you can get very detailed information about the uh, tone map being used between two devices, and for each sub-career, you can get the modulation of it. So it can be interesting if you want to uh, do an estimation of the uh, theoretical rate between two devices. So, um, as I told you previously, we are looking for contributors to uh, test the, the tool on different devices. So far we've been trying to uh, get a wide range of devices, but not everything has been tested. Um, it could be interesting to implement a GUI on top of it because um, well it's command line based, so it's interesting, but it's not really uh, it's not like candy. And uh, we have other projects um, in parallel, such as doing a Wireshark dissector for it. And uh, we will probably start prototyping a PLC stack using a FPGA and a FI chip, so that we can uh, have. A uh, an open source device, open hardware device during power line communications. So, uh, question session is now open. If you want, if you have any question, okay. Please wait for the microphone. The microphone is coming from the gotcha. We have five minutes. Um, you have ten minutes now for questions. Any question? Yeah, it's, it's switched off. No, no, it's on. Okay, have you seen any of these power line devices uh, with included power over Ethernet? Because I always thought it would be a nice feature to have power over Ethernet because it's generally plugged into a power socket. No, usually, usually they are using the energy uh, coming from the electrical network. Yeah, no, my question was, if you want to uh, attach some, for instance, voice over IP telephone, which is uh, capable for power over Ethernet, so it would be easier because you have just one thing which plugs into your network featuring one-time network data communication and uh, power for, for the phone, but it's not yet on the market. Or is anybody planning some devices which feature PoE? If I get the question right, you want to know if there is power over Ethernet devices? Output by the Output. Devices, devices. Not from not that we know of. No. There's a lot of, well, there's quite a lot of things to change on the uh, power supply of your equipment if you want to do power line communication natively. So. Ah, okay. I see, thank you. I got a question. Uh, for the sniffer mode, do I need the NEC, the network encryption key? To do sniffer mode? No. No. What do I see then without the NEC? I just see encrypted packets. No, you, you see unencrypted packets. Unencrypted? Yes. Okay. We Actually, you don't see all the frames from what we have seen. We don't, we don't investigate very uh, much the sniffer mode, but basically it's uh, mostly managing management frames that we see. Yeah, everything that is related to the Mac, uh, to the access to the medium, which is in clear, mm -hmm. is available to a sniffer mode. Okay. Hello? Is there any form of integrity checking on the frames? So is, it, is the injection possible at all? Or just encryption? I mean, the question um, is, uh, is there any form of integrity checking on the frames? There's something I didn't talk about, but there's something called uh, loopback mode, which allows you to uh, create a, to send 
a custom Ethernet frame to a device and it's going to spread it to the network. Does that answer your question? Somehow? Um, somehow I was asking about the uh, cryptography. I mean, if there is any form of integrity checking or it's just in plain encryption on, uh, on based on, on the key, just that. How the encryption system yes. works? Yes. If, if there is any form of integrity checking, I mean, something like a central line like, like that. Is, is injection possible I mean, in the network? You can, you can use um, devices in a, in a node to inject frames. You will have, if you want, interaction with the other devices to be able to uh, be part of the network and use the NEC key that we are talking about so to somehow recreate this NEC. Do we have more questions? How easy is it to use your code as a library to write, for example, stuff like KDE or GNOME network monitors that show me the link quality and stuff like this? Or is it on uh, a monolithic application? That's a good question. Um, I think this will require quite a lot of, of uh, code refactoring, but we already thought the tool to be uh, a library, so it should be fairly easy for you to, uh, to have a high level primitives such as uh, configure this equipment with, with this key. So yes. Thanks. Have you investigated the use of GNU radio and the universal software radio peripheral for decoding <laughs> PLC signals? Of course, when we're talking about using FPGA to uh, implement the MAC layer, this is very close from what GNU Radio is doing. Basically, power line communications is injecting radio into a cable. If you, if you look at it from the physical layer and, the fi and the radio emission, what we are doing, you're taking high frequency modulation and you inject it into a copper, co copper cable, which is electrical cable, but for instance, you don't need the 50 hertz, 220 volt or 110 volt to have communications. You can do it on a normal cable. So from the radio aspect, it's very close from the radio technology. So you can use any kind of uh, advanced radio, Mac layer, uh, like new radio, and use it for the Mac parts. After you just need the right physical interface with the medium. Do we have more questions? <coughs> How much is the maximum distance between two um, environments? Or is it possible to enlarge the distance by your firmware? Or Wait, what am I doing? I can repeat the question. The question was, what's the maximum distance between two equipments? And provided that you change the firmware, is it possible to extend the range? Uh, the, the power uh, transmission is limited by uh, hardware into the chips so far. Uh, we may have different vendors with the IEEE standard coming up and we may see some that will be able to uh, adjust the power transmission. The limitation now is uh, 100 milliwatts. So you have the same kind of limitation you have in Wi-Fi. The only thing you can play with is by injecting more properly the signal on the electrical cable like using a uh, coupler, like inducti inductive coupler that you can wrap around the cable and you will be able to do a magnetic injection of the signal into the cable. Then you will extend the propagation of the signal. Uh, in terms of distance, you can, uh, you can go up to uh, 100 to 400 meters of cable between two devices. Uh, with quite advanced injector, you can go up to one kilometer of cable, uh, but you, may, you need to be able to have a clean channel uh, at the physical layer. Have you looked at other types of protocols for PLC communication? There's one called Lone Talk or Lone Works, made by a US company called Echelon, uh, which is very, very popular, probably one of the most implemented PLC communications. Have you looked anything at that? I, um, when I was splitting the PLC world into uh, low bit rates, high bit rates, loan works belongs to low bit rates, so the small, the low band that is between 3 kHz and uh, 150. 
We have been only targeting Ethernet uh, technology like Homeplug. Homeplug is uh, developing another competitor to Loneworks called Homeplug CC, which is a little bit inspired by uh, Loneworks. Um, but so far we have not been using Loneworks. People can add uh, functions to FIFA for Loneworks or Homeplug CC. Uh. Question. Is our, fr is our English okay for everybody? Yeah. It's okay? <laughs> so let's you know, we. Uh, a French uh, question. Let's have a bit of broken English then from uh, another French. Uh, the question is as I understand, it's very hard to um, basically analyze uh, from a hardware perspective um, if you don't have an adapter. So the fact is, your power line is acting as an antenna. How feasible is it to take it? as a time test kind of uh, eavesdropping equipment with an antenna from a remote distance and physically re-inject that directly into a current in order to just use the PLC normal adapters and FIFA to decode these kind of uh, messages. If I get the question clear, you want to time test the power line cables? Yeah, and then re-inject into another, uh, another clean power line, I would say, that you will plug uh, uh, HP uh, AV, uh, home plug AV, in order to use FIFA as it is. So how feasible this would be? If you tempest the cable, uh, it will damage the, the signal for sure. Um, again, if you, if you are not uh, able to uh, be part of the logical network, it will be hard to, to receive the frames and work with that you will have to implement the whole uh, two way. Okay. Well, in practice, you may notice that two, um, two logical unplug AV networks, for instance, I get one at home, my neighbor has another one, both are um, inter you know, sharing, uh, share sharing the same bandwidth because it's not capable of, uh, for instance, this one uses uh, the low subcarriers and the other one uses high subcarriers. They're not capable of doing this, so they're interfering with each other. One question that we have uh, often is, I have power line communication at home with my ISP. Is my neighbor able to sniff my communications? Uh, the home plug AV standard says that all devices going out on the market are using the same default key, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> so basically everybody buying out of the shelf devices can share everything. Uh, I have been doing the test in a six stories building in Paris. From the sixth floor to the ground floor, I can see the communications. So you can have a large Ethernet hub sharing everything in a building if you don't change the default key. Yes. So you no longer need Freifunk? No. <laughs> you mesh your... Do we have more questions? Any more questions? Are there any outdoor equipment available on, on the market you can buy or it's only for uh, dedicated ISPs that want to use this technology to spread internet? You, you can find uh, equipment out there. Uh, of course, you switch from uh, a couple of uh, dozens euros to a uh, thousand euros, but yes, you can, uh, you can find. Actually, the chip and the technology is the same, only the power uh, transmission is different and the way they inject the signal on the medium voltage or low voltage is different. Uh, last year, Google, this small company, they bought a uh, power line communication company in the US called uh, Current Technology, which is providing internet access to, uh, to several uh, states in the US because they wanted to see what is the result of uh, internet access over power line. Could you please elaborate more on the outdoor use? Because you just said you missed the schematics and you didn't say anything about the outdoor use. So how, how can it be used outdoors? So when, when we're talking about hub outdoor, we are talking about the so-called public electrical network. So depending on the countries, you will have to uh, 
very quickly interact with the electrical carriers, electrical uh, provider in your country, which will be the medium manager. So different countries have different regulation. In the US, for instance, electrical uh, carriers now are now putting themselves in two telecommunications carriers over the power line cables. Um, in French, it's more complex. In Germany, they have uh, different uh, parts. Switzerland, for instance, Freiburg, uh, they have a small network there. In Africa, they, there is Algeria and South Africa implementing that technology for uh, um, access in different parts. I've heard that there, in some parts where they have electrical network, they can feed uh, BTS for GSM through power line communications and they can have uh, one only network on the electrical network. Um, in terms of technology, again, you are finding the same kind of technology. So home plug AV, for instance, is used for outdoor also. It's slightly different because they have been implementing a small Mac, small Mac layer for managing because they want to be in master-slave mode. They don't want anybody to be at the same level on the architecture if they are ISP. So the master is at the core of the network and you have slaves uh, after the meters for each home. IEEE is now doing also a draft for uh, outdoor implementation called uh, IEEE BPL. It's very, very similar to uh, the uh, DSL architecture, in fact. So you get um, the physical layer, your physical layer is almost the same because your copper and cables are very similar, but you also have uh, work on having provisioning systems and things like that. So at home you would have, uh, for instance, that kind of router. Uh, you put it on the um, public on the meter and you get uh, Wi-Fi or home plug IV on the home side. It's supposed to be closed. Oh, sorry. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah, I have one question. How well does this deal with, if you have different phases, for example, you have a family house, you get 380 volts from the power company with three phases, and you usually you don't care on which room is on which phase, but now with PLC you start to care, so how well does it work? So usually electrical network in uh, three phases mode is uh, one natural cable and three phase cables. Yeah. Um, of course, is if the three cables, if the four cables are very close one to the other, you will have injection of the signal from one cable to the other. No, but you, had, you get 383 phases from the outside, and then you divide it in your house into 220 volts with one phase. But you, it could be that your living room is on a different phase than your, than your bedroom, mm -hmm. and you want to have these two rooms connected. So will it work or not? Usually you will have to use the core, the head of the network when you have your, uh, your uh, uh, blockers and uh, yeah. meter. That's where you have the three phase going. After it depends on the electrical network. But if somehow two phases are very close one to the other, you will find the signal going from one cable to the other. Another technique is to use the neutral cable because it's the same for three phases. So if you inject the, the signal on the neutral, you're sure you will find this signal on the three phases. And also on electrical network, the neutral is cleaner. It's just because of the way the impedance between phase and neutral is done. So, and the devices you can buy in the shop, they use the neutral cable or not? I mean, if I buy now three, three devices that I've given to my parents, will it work or not? Of course, yes. I do not know the house of your parents, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a family house which gets these three phases from the outside, so... I will recommend, I will recommend uh, briefly to use the head of the network and use the natural cable to inject the signal. So to find a plug that is very close from the head of the network and plug the devices there. Okay. Thank you. All right, then. Thank you very much.